If you look around my office, you might realize I have kind of a love for dark, twisted cartoons. And a lot of that may be because I grew up with a lot of dark, twisted cartoons. Now, I'm not talking about the ones like Batman or ones that were meant for older kids. I'm talking about the ones that were meant for little, little kids, and they probably should have been made for little, little kids. And I loved the hell out of them. I enjoyed how much they scared me. I loved how every time you got through one, you felt a little tougher. So I'm doing a series reacting and reviewing them. We're gonna analyze how creative they are, how dark they are, and if the dark twisted tone was warranted. So join me in taking a look at some dark tunes. Hey, we're back with Courage Month. Sorry I couldn't get you a video last week. I got sick, but I'm better now. We're gonna continue on with it. With that said, Demon in the Mattress was released in 1999. A lot of you recommended it, and I can definitely see why. Let's take a look. I may have brought this up before, but I really miss shows that have title cards, like unique title cards. My favorite was probably uh, Tiny Toons. They had a really wide, unique range of title cards that look great and give you a little idea of what you're about to see. And this does the same. This is a really good looking card with good color and it pops out. And again, it's a little bit of a preview of what you're about to come across. I don't know if spoiler culture just got too much. Like, no, don't ruin a thing, but uh, I, I really like them. Really nice opening shot there. Now, the way you would get this kind of shot in live action is you would use a telephoto lens where you would take something that's far away, zoom in on it, and then have something in the foreground so that the moon looks gigantic, uh, like in something like E.T., something like that. But the great thing about animation is you can just draw it that way, so you don't need any kind of specific filter. You can just draw it and it exists. Eustace, I want a new mattress, and that's the end of the matter. As I said before, the colors in this show, amazing. How often do you see hot pink with dark shadows? <laughs> and that hideous wallpaper is practically becoming its own character. I'm actually wondering if there's an episode where, like, the wallpaper is a character and tries to eat him or something, or do they get lost in the wallpaper? I don't know, I digress, but was that an episode? That should be an episode. We have a special on our deluxe, life-changing mattress. It's soft. One of the great things about this show is that the scary elements they tap into, the very traditional classic horror film elements, really go back to like the Peter Lorre days, the Vincent Price days, uh, sort of the Hammer films and black and white uh, classic monster movies. So a lot of the voices they have have this dreary kind of voice, or this high-pitched kind of voice, very much like how people tried to sound creepy in those days and a lot of the mad scientists would talk. It's really great to hear in a show like this because again, it just calls back to so many great classic films and creates this really wonderful environment and uh, atmosphere. It's smooth. Smooth. No lumps. That voice alone sounds like a perfect mix of Peter Lorre and Vincent Price somehow fusing together. <laughs> Again, as you've heard me say a million times before about this show, great use of really bright, vibrant colors that contrast off each other, and phenomenal shadows, having red against green, those are not only Christmas colors, but again, they really, really contrast and work well off each other. Uh, just absolutely gorgeous. A creepy horse-drawn carriage right out of Dracula, or another classic horror film of that sort. And at first I didn't like that the wheels in the carriage were uh, computer generated, but I'm finding more and more with this show, the more they use CG, the more otherworldly it seems to come across. And it's actually growing on me. Like when you see this carriage coming up and you see those 3D wheels, you kind of know something's off about it. And it, not, not just off, I mean, it's a carriage, you know, bringing you a, a mattress, but there's something that really feels otherworldly about it, right down to it's not the same type of animation. Also, I never noticed, that's a black unicorn. How often do you see a black unicorn? <laughs> now, I have no idea if this is intentional. My guess is it isn't, but it's still a fun little detail. You have this red landscape that, of course, looks very hellish, but you have a green door at the center, and often in films, when you see a red door, that means danger. So here, it's completely switched, and the supernatural element in this is green, that green mattress that has a demon in it. So I don't know if that's intentional, but it's kind of a fun little detail. <laughs> wonderful creature. That has such a great idea of a haunted mattress with the face on it and glowing and everything. That's just, ooh, that's, it's so creative. I love it. I love that this show can 
bring out monsters that everybody knows, like a werewolf and so forth, but it can also create something kind of new. I don't know, I've never heard of a demon mattress. <laughs> And this rodent that scares courage for absolutely no reason, <laughs> but he does it over and over. I just can't wait to see this! So many of these episodes I've talked about how they get these fisheye lens, tilted angles, high angles, low angles, a lot of the time, like what you see in horror films. And what I like is even with them bringing in the mattress and courage going up the stairs here, you don't need to be like that distorted. This easily could have been just a straightforward uh, shot just looking down, but look at the railing, look at the lighting, they make it just a little off, and I think that really does add quite a bit. Once again, green, that's very much going to be the evil color in this episode, which ties into something else, which we'll talk about in a second here. There you go, as you probably put together, this is a parody of The Exorcist. A lot of that film is spent in this bedroom uh, with this possessed girl who turns green and pukes green stuff and she's on the bed most of the time, so it only makes sense you're gonna have an evil mattress, it's gonna have a tie into The Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can one of you boys give me a hand? Apparently that scene is censored in some countries. I can't imagine why. Won't you join me? It's such a creepy idea too, because she's usually so nice and kind, not always the brightest, but you know, this very kind lady. So to see not only this entirely different voice uh, come out of her mouth, but just this totally different personality. It's a good way to make you uncomfortable. And at the same time, it really demonstrates how likable these characters are, that when you see this, you are legit like concerned. Even her husband actually wants to help out. This is one of the few times where he actually has put together that something bad is going on and his wife's life is at stake and he wants to do something about it. Another color change here, we've gone to purple. Purple's a little bit more of a neutral color. And again, you can see that room, it's still shining green. That's the prominent nasty color here. She likes you. Go see how she is. I like that too, even though he's her husband. She likes him. She likes the dog. Like, of course she wouldn't like her husband. <laughs> The frost on the door and the breath, again, very much from Exorcist, where it got so cold they could see their breath in the room. Closer. Look at that shot. What a great shot. So much depth of field in that shot. I always like very wide shots like this, where a character starts off really far away and slowly they have to get closer and they almost become more and more distorted as they get closer. Again, that's very much how a wide-angle lens works. But very perceptive of them to, you know, play off of that. As Courage gets closer, he gets a little distorted too. If I could have a cup of tea. I don't get that at all, but God, it makes me laugh. <laughs> You think it's gonna be something really scary? It's not. He screams. I still don't know why this demon wants tea, but uh, man, maybe it's a little bit of the <laughs> lady still in there. I don't know, but really makes me laugh. Courage, help me! Whoops! <laughs> Stories where someone is turned into something always freaked me out as a kid. They still do a little bit now, maybe because it's not real uh like if someone's turned into a statue or a robot or something it's like where does your mind go <laughs> like I, I never know does it sleep are you awake the whole time uh and you can't do anything about it it's such a scary idea watch my thumb the thumb wrestling again like the tea it's just pure silliness and sometimes that's enough <laughs> to perform an exorcism Put on a flowing garment. So I have a theory that the reason they can perform an exorcism in a kid show, essentially, is that they don't make any remarks to any religions in it. So there's nothing about you have to get a priest or you have to dress up like a priest. It's just a long flowing garment. Of course, that leads to the great joke where they get uh, Mural's nightgown <laughs> and he has to wear that. And I think that's their kind of workaround with it, that they can sort of talk about this evil demonic thing that does come from a religious background, as long as you don't say the religion or have any uh symbols from the religion that's why you can see kids dress up as like witches and devils and stuff i mean that all has a very tragic <laughs> backstory but uh as long as you don't have a cross in there i guess most parents are okay as an adult who cares i'm technically wearing a religious shirt <laughs> the church of friday give me a break i can 
do it. Want a tip? Yeah, sure. <laughs> that's a good joke. The demon's gonna offer him advice. And of course, that's the green vomit from Exorcist. I, you, you've made the connection long before I even had to say it. Rory, Rock, Rippity, Roo, Rick him in the wristband, Roo, Roo, Roo! I guess Courage has more enthusiasm in his cheer, and that seems to work. And actually, I love the fact that this thing. In, in so many movies and shows, some sort of evil spirit, it goes in through your heart or through your eyes. I love that it goes in through the nose. That's such a unique <laughs> entrance and exit. No! And again, it does have kind of a dark ending because Eustace gets possessed, they wrap up uh, the mattress, and they just hand it back with him in there. <laughs> like, eh, it's his problem now. And I do get, feel kind of bad, because this is an episode where he legit tried to help out, and he just kind of gets screwed over in the end, so I don't know, maybe for all the other times he made things worse. Now this is a bed I can sleep in any day. So there you go, that is Demon in the Mattress. It's a pretty fun episode. I like the little critters that give the mattress. I like the mattress itself. And yeah, their use of the color green, man, is great. I really love how they make it like this kind of creepy color, which you've seen in a lot of stuff. I mean, you've seen that in Ghostbusters and so forth. But when you think of green, you think of like plant life, you think of the outdoors, but it can be associated with sickliness. And in a lot of cartoons and movies, like they have kind of a silly touch, but a dark touch too. They'll make stuff like glow green. You think of like radioactive stuff and something about that just always looks a little unsettling and creepy but also really funny. I think it's such a funny color to make threatening <laughs> and I think this episode really really does a good job at that. It's great seeing uh, Mural is like the bad guy. It's great seeing her with that different voice come out and the, the red hair again a great contrast with the green. I really enjoyed it. I really had a lot of fun with it so yeah that's about it. We got more Courage Month uh, coming this month and one day of the next month because I did miss uh, last week so I'll make up for that. So yeah, I will see you guys at the next one.